Welcome to the Geospatial Intelligence Podcast. My name is Aybar Sestuna and I'm the founder and CEO of Geospatial Intelligence Institute and Master of Science in Geospatial Intelligence student at the Johns Hopkins University. Geospatial Intelligence, an emerging field. We'll be talking everything about it. Let's begin. Special intelligence is relatively new, but its roots have a long and intriguing history. Geospatial knowledge has grown from its ancient origins to become prevalent in daily life worldwide. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, formerly known as the National Imagery and Mapping Agency, was established in 1996. The phrase the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency was coined in 2003 by Director of National Intelligence James R. Clapper Jr. to represent the agency's purpose better. Who benefits from GeoInt? GeoInt is a broad encompassing field that benefits many industries, organizations and individuals. It is often referred to as a horizontal market as it has applicability into almost every industry. For example, state and local governments use GeoInt to plan their cities. Militaries use GeoInt for situational awareness and insight into operations. And businesses use GeoInt to understand their target markets. Large consumers of GeoInt include most governments and commercial consumers in energy, utilities, real estate, insurance, transportation engineering, construction, and agriculture. The utilization of geospatial intelligence can witness an expansion in its application to different fields than for military or security purposes. We can witness the usage of GeoInt being practiced in the business industry, giving businesses an edge to compete against each other in a highly competitive corporate world. Geospatial intelligence is said to have driven businesses towards acquiring efficiencies in their logistics and marketing operations. These two areas are considered among the essential basis for a business to have successful operations. It also helps in introducing an advancement in businesses' supply chain facilities. B2B, which is business-to-business model, and B2C, which is business-to-customer model, businesses are getting more inclined toward using geospatial intelligence. Where does geospatial intelligence come from? Geospatial intelligence is derived by geospatial analysts from special data sources to include sensors equipped on satellite or aircraft. Imagery is a common source for geospatial information as it contains special metadata and visual information. Furthermore, GeoInt comes from people utilizing advanced tools and sensors to pinpoint this information and perform analysis to answer intelligence questions, make predictions, or enhance understanding. GeoInt analysts analyze all sorts of imagery and location-based intelligence sources to include motion video, LiDAR, electro-optical imagery, also referred to as RGB or color imagery, infrared, synthetic aperture radar, hyperspectral, multispectral, and ground-moving target indicators. Each sensor is chosen carefully to answer specific intelligence questions. For example, if you wanted to understand the nighttime activity of animals in certain locations, a joint analyst will utilize infrared imagery and analyze the thermal signatures of the animals. Geospatial intelligence derived from analysis will help you answer questions about the animals. 
I became acquainted with the information based on geospatial intelligence when I was looking to get enrolled in a master's program. I completed my Bachelor of Arts in International Studies with a minor in Intelligence Studies from the University of South Florida in 2021. I was fascinated by the things I learned minoring in Intelligence Studies. My search brought me to Johns Hopkins University. Johns Hopkins is a pioneer in this field and has the best program in the world to provide master's program in geospatial intelligence, which captured my attention. When I started getting my master's education, I felt a door of endless opportunities and possibilities opening for me to have my career established. It is a field that wouldn't just box me into a specific work field. I can provide consultancy services in different variety of fields after acquiring adequate education in geospatial intelligence. Consultancy services in agricultural or horticultural fields, the construction industry, especially in hotel or housekeeping construction, where location holds significant importance in logistics, marketing, or supply chain management in the business field, aviation industry, especially in specialized air crash investigation, meteorological organizations. The application of geospatial intelligence is not limited to these fields. The application of geoint can be expanded into almost every field existing in the world. One of the main reasons why I'm recording this podcast is to spread awareness among people regarding the importance of geospatial intelligence. From the outlook, it may seem like something from which an ordinary person couldn't benefit, but if we consider spending time understanding what it is and how it can be utilized in our work field, then there wouldn't be any force keeping us from making new inventions. Although its current use originated in national security groups, GeoInt has quickly spread to other government agencies, NGOs, and enterprises. GeoInt imagery was traditionally created and used in the military and national defense sectors to supervise adversaries' movements, strengths, and weak points. However, thanks to advancements in computer software technology that allows it to handle big data, such as georeferenced social media and many earth images, geographic information systems have been accepted by public safety emergency management, homeland security, and other domestic authorities. What is GEOINT? The term GEOINT stands for Geospatial Intelligence, which is a discipline that comprises the exploitation and analysis of imagery and geospatial information to describe, assess, and visually depict physical features and geographically referenced activities on Earth. Geoint combines several disciplines, such as mapping, charting, imagery analysis, and imagery intelligence. Although normally associated with a military context, the fact is that increasingly civilian and private sector organizations working in areas such as telecommunications, transportation, public health and safety, and real estate are using geospatial intelligence to improve the quality of everyday life. The basic principle of GEOINT is to organize and combine all available data around its geographical location on Earth and then exploit it in order to prepare products that can be easily used by planners, emergency responders and decision makers. GEOINT covers a spectrum of geospatial data, information and intelligence including activities and events, bathymetric, elevation and depth, geodesy, human geography, hydrographic, imagery, intelligence mission data, maritime, meteorological, names and boundaries, oceanographic, targeting, topographic. Let me try to explain in a simple way. All events and behaviors happen somewhere. This somewhere is referred to as geospatial information. GEOINT is the usable information and the end result from analyzing geospatial information. For example, if we analyze your home, 
The geospatial information is the location of your home on the Earth's surface. Simply providing this geospatial information is not intelligence itself. Notably, intelligence is derived from analysis. An example of geospatial intelligence will start with an intelligence question such as how far away is the closest grocery store? Performing geospatial analysis, we determine the distance to the nearest grocery store, travel or route options, travel times, or other impact factors such as traffic conditions or how well lit the travel route may be. In addition to the geospatial data, now you have geospatial intelligence. You are empowered to make decisions and choose the route that is right for you. This is a basic example you are probably familiar with since most common mapping services do some of this for you automatically. This podcast will introduce the listeners to the futuristic world, to something that can shape the way we live our lives now and how we operate in the world, be it individually, unitedly in corporations or associations, or politically on an international scale. It can bring civilizations closer to looking at what the near future may look like. Most people who are unaware of this scientific marvel will be astounded when they learn about this new world of limitless possibilities provided by geospatial intelligence. When looking at this possibility, the idea of recording a podcast about it struck my mind. If more people are educated, especially the young, college-going youth in geospatial intelligence, they'll be able to make a career out of it. They may even go on to develop innovations that will not only help our country become more efficient, but will also allow us to help humanity through the use of geospatial intelligence. Climate change is a real struggle that the world is facing today, with many countries facing floods, earthquakes, and natural disasters that they have never had before. Geospatial intelligence can provide surveillance of such countries and areas affected by natural catastrophes. It can lead to authorities being aware of the areas hit hard by natural disasters and people's need for help. Rescue missions can be carried out and so can preventative measures by evacuating people before a disaster hits the area within the country. Using geospatial intelligence in national or global meteorological organizations, one can be aware of the possibilities of a country or a specific area being affected by a natural catastrophe. This is how geospatial intelligence is integrated into our lives. It can be used for different functionalities, from business sectors to rescuing people affected by natural disasters or locating survivors of a plane crash. One of the heaviest usages of geospatial intelligence is to be used to locate the debris of flight MH700 and to resolve the dark mystery surrounding the final fate of the flight and the people on board that fateful evening. In addition to this, geospatial intelligence is also used in the fields of geological and archaeological sciences as well. Geospatial intelligence is believed to have a significant role in finding the world's long-hidden eighth continent, Zealandia. Just a few decades ago, we could never have thought there would ever be a discovery of the eighth continent in the world despite scientists' confirmation of its existence. By applying geospatial intelligence, scientists could know the location of the world's eighth continent that has been submerged in the ocean throughout its existence. The core functions of geospatial intelligence that enable it to be applicable in various industries. It analyzes the locations of people through their mobile phones, regardless of where they are in the world. Similarly, it helps detect people's locations through their vehicular usage and money withdrawal activities using ATM services. It provides high-resolution images from space making them accessible for organizations using commercial rockets or satellites. It can be used to retrieve information in imagery 
from through the aerial device and convey it to the people, most likely to be influenced by that information, such as predicting and alerting a country of a natural disaster. It can enhance the computing machine speed, enabling it to carry out heavy functions through its high-powered computing abilities. This will facilitate large-scale imagery crowdsourcing, such as crowdsourced crisis mapping of humanitarian relief efforts for natural or human-caused disasters. Geospatial intelligence can better understand the data retrieved from live streaming regarding the kinds of products people use or prefer. This tends to provide opportunities for businesses to expand to new markets and expand their services to a new customer segment after exploiting the useful data retrieved from people in a specific region. Correctly applying geospatial intelligence isn't possible without acquiring knowledge about the subject. If you would like to know more about it, be ready and get excited about it. Because in the next episodes, you'll be taken to the world of information based on geospatial intelligence. You'll start to get in that knowledge of different aspects of this new field of science that is still developing as it is an ever-evolving field of science. If you would like to have a variety of sources, feel free to follow geospatialintelligenceinstitute.org. My name is Aybars Östuna and this is the Geospatial Intelligence Podcast.